Hello, welcome to the Society of Thoracic Surgeons 8 and 8 series. Uh, the topic of today's uh, presentation is lung resection in patients with marginal pulmonary function. The presenters are Janet P. Edwards from the University of Calgary and myself, Robert E. Merritt from Ohio State Wexner Medical Center. The risk assessment for lung resection really hinges on three important factors. The incision type, which includes whether the patient undergoes an open thoracotomy or a minimally invasive approach. The extent of resection uh, hinges on whether the patient undergoes a low bar resection or a sub low bar resection, which is parenchymal sparing. The most important factor is the predicted postoperative lung function, uh, which is an interaction between the extent of re resection and the patient's pulmonary reserve. All three of these factors converge to determine the postoperative outcomes. Cardiopulmonary function testing is very essential to determining the risk of uh, postoperative uh, respiratory compromise in patients with marginal pulmonary function. Pulmonary function testing is essential. The two most important elements of pulmonary function tests includes barometry, which measures the force aspiratory volume in one second, or FEV1. A value of two liters, or 40% of predicted, is considered high risk. Diffusion capacity, or DLCO, is a measurement of the gas exchange at the alveolar level. A value of 40% predicted or less is a threshold for a high-risk patient with pulmonary compromise. The measurement of the predicted postoperative function, or PPO, is also essential uh, for determining the extent of resection that a patient can tolerate. Uh, the PPO is the preoperative uh, uh, spirometry times the postoperative segments divided by the preoperative segments. An alternative measurement of pulmonary function is exercise capacity and measurement of oxygen consumption. The VO2 max of less than 10 milliliters per kilogram per minute is considered a high-risk patient. A functional test that can be utilized in the clinic is the stair climb or the shuttle walk. The clinician can escort the patient uh, walking up a couple flights of stairs and measuring their pulse oximetry uh, during this exercise. Shown here is the American College of Chest Physicians consensus-based functional algorithm. Cardiac risk stratification is based on clinical assessment and thoracic revised cardiac risk index with moderate or high risk patients being sent for formal cardiac evaluation and CPET. The low risk patient proceeds to PFTs and those with a post-op predicted FEV1 and DLCO greater than 60 may proceed to surgery. Those with values between 30 and 60% should have low technology exercise tests going on to surgery if they perform adequately. Otherwise, they should undergo formal CPET. Patients with values less than 30 go straight to CPET. Patients can then be classified as low, moderate, and high risk, helping guide the discussion between surgeon and patient. These recommendations are limited to lobectomy or greater resections performed by thoracotomy and don't specifically address minimally invasive approaches or sub-lobar resections. Morbidity and mortality are objective measures of whether or not a patient can undergo surgery with a reasonable risk-benefit profile. While mortality is generally quoted by the STS as 1-2% to for lobectomy and 4-6% to for pneumonectomy, individual patient characteristics modify those estimates. This table is an excerpt from an STS database study published in 2010 showing major predictors of morbidity and mortality. Thoracic reoperation and induction chemotherapy were not associated with mortality or morbidity, while induction chemoradiotherapy was a predictor of both. Compared with a non-anatomic wedge resection, segmentectomy and lobectomy increased the risk of major complications but not the risk of mortality while bilobectomy and pneumonectomy conferred both increased morbidity and mortality. In addition to the parameters shown, poor performance status and poor physical status of patients before surgery, measured by Zubrod score and ASA rating respectively, have large impacts on mortality and morbidity. The treatment options for patients with marginal pulmonary function includes operative approaches and non-operative approaches. Uh, segmentectomy is a 
anatomical sublobar resection, which is parenchymal sparing, uh, but it is a form of an anatomical resection. Uh, the wedge resection is a non-anatomical resection, which is parenchymal sparing. The non-operative approaches include stereotactic body radiosurgery, which is high-dose radiation uh, used to treat uh, early-stage non-small cell lung cancers in patients with marginal lung function and significant medical comorbidities. An alternative to SBRT is radiofrequency ablation, which uses either cryoablation or radiofrequency ablation to locally ablate a non-small cell lung cancer. The outcomes of sublobar resection versus SBRT has been examined in some uh, retrospective studies. In this study, uh, the, there was an overall survival advantage for patients undergoing sublobar resection compared to patients undergoing SBRT. However, in the cancer-specific disease-free survival comparison, there was no significant difference. Health-related quality of life is a multidimensional concept encompassing social, emotional, cognitive, physical, and functional aspects as assessed by validated measurement tools. Analysis of functional outcomes after lung resection demonstrates significant impairments in quality of life parameters after pneumonectomy, but otherwise no striking differences based on extent or approach of resection. Examining subgroups of high-risk patients, such as those over 70 years of age, DLCO less than 70%, post-operative predicted FEV1 or DLCO less than 40%, or coronary artery disease in limited studies showed no significant differences in quality of life post-resection. While data are somewhat limited, they support an individualized approach stressing mutual decision-making compatible with the preferences and goals of the patient, regardless of their risk of surgical complication, as long as the patient comprehends the nature and likelihood of those risks. We have suggested some ways to modify risk, such as sublobar or minimally invasive approaches. Smoking cessation, while a challenging endeavor, can decrease perioperative risk, lung cancer-specific mortality, and also all-cause mortality in lung, cause, lung cancer patients. Preoperative exercise therapy was found in a 2017 Cochrane review to reduce postoperative pulmonary complications and length of stay. However, the number of studies available in the meta-analyses were low, thus strong recommendations could not be made based on the available evidence. Finally, centralization of lung cancer surgery to either high volume or centers of excellence has been proposed as a means to decrease operative risk. This figure from a 2010 STS database study illustrates the varied rates of mortality or major morbidity at over 100 participating hospitals compared with the projected rates for an average participant that treated the same case mix. The probability intervals of some of the best performing hospitals seen on the left side do not overlap with some of the hospitals with the worst outcomes seen on the right side, providing one means to identify outstanding performers. Other studies have shown that complication rates and Medicare payments are significantly lower for high-risk patients treated at local high-quality hospitals, suggesting that the triage of high-risk patients to local high-quality facilities can improve outcomes. In summary, the surgeon must integrate all available data in a process of careful joint decision-making, resulting in a tailored individualized approach compatible with the preferences and goals of the patient. Thank you.